While returning home to find that robbers have broken in and stolen possessions from your home is a gut-wrenching feeling. How much worse it must be to return to find your entire home has been stolen. It's not a rare event either. Here are four cases just from the early 1950s. A South African gold miner named C.J. Duplessis told Johannesburg police in 1950 that he had bought a house three years earlier but had not lived there. Now it had been stolen. They didn't believe him at first until shown the vacant site where it had stood. Only the foundations remained. Every brick and piece of timber had gone. A resident of Flinders Island in the Bass Strait went on an extended fishing trip, coming back in October 1951. He berthed his boat at Lady Barron and walked five miles to his home, only to find it had been spirited away. He walked back five miles and made other arrangements for the night in the town. Police were investigating reports a businessman had been tricked into buying the property for £100 and removed it. A widow rented a house she owned at the corner of Glenvale Road and Cubber Street, Ringwood, Melbourne, to a 48-year-old cook for two years in the early 1950s. After a few weeks of not receiving any rent, she went to the address on the 25th of April 1954 to inquire the reason, and instead of the three-room fibro-cement house with iron roof she expected to see, she was met by an empty block of land. She last saw the house in October 1953. The large room was 12 by 14 feet. A week later, on the 30th of April, police arrested a 48-year-old man at Waraknabil and charged him with larceny. Meanwhile, in Japan, Kayoshi Muraki built a two-storey house in the Shinjuku district of Tokyo in August 1954. In November, he went to inspect it, only to find an empty lot surrounded by barbed wire. Neighbours told him they had seen 20 labourers dismantling the building, but had not realised anything was wrong. Even if it is nailed down, they'll take it.